Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie. In today's video, we are talking about all the books that I read in April. There were a total of nine. We're gonna go through each one. I'll tell you my thoughts about them and what I rated them and if I would recommend them or not. April was a very busy month for me. It's my birthday month and I had family come in town, but I still got through some good ones. I definitely have some good books in here that I read, so I'm excited to go through them. So let's just get into it. The first book I read was actually on my Kindle. I just got this Kindle this past month my dad actually sent it to me he randomly had a kindle had never opened it and i was like i will take that from your hands but it's so cute i decorated it i love it and it's really fun to read on but the first book i read on my kindle was never lie by frida mcfadden i love frida mcfadden's writing she does thrillers if you didn't know but i have become obsessed with her writing i think it's so captivating i always love every single book i read by her never lie is about a couple that are newlyweds they're looking for their dream home and one day they go to meet a realtor at this house kind of in the middle of nowhere i'm pretty sure it's based in new york but it's like in the middle of nowhere new york they're supposed to meet this real estate agent that will show them around the house the day they go there it's a really bad snowstorm so they're just like very unsure about going in the first place but they decide that they already had this plan so they should just follow through with it they get to this house there are lights on in the house so they assume their realtor's there but they don't see her car so that's a little weird but they end up kind of just going in they think they're gonna find the real estate agent there to show them around Around. and when they get there they don't find anyone they literally search like the whole house looking for her and realize she's not there but basically this winter storm ends up trapping them in the house and they have to stay there they later find out it's this renowned psychiatrist house she has like a picture of herself on the wall with all of her books that she's written the main character ends up finding this room of tapes that the psychiatrist has held from past patients and starts going through all those tapes and finds out some crazy secrets again i feel like every freedom mcfadden book has a great twist to it and this one definitely like shook me so i completely recommend this book or just any freedom mcfadden book if you haven't read her before she is such a great author i love her so much and i gave this book a four out of five but i would for sure recommend it there is a pretty crazy ending to it and i just love her writing so that was the first book i read in april and we were already off to a great start the second book i read in april was the deal by l kennedy i have never read anything from her before but I've heard so much about her before I read this book. This is the first book in the off-campus series, which again, I've heard so much about, but this is like a sports romance series. The characters are in college. You have Hannah, who's the artsy, creative, like musical girly. She's very smart. She's taking this class with one of her crushes, who is like one of the football guys at her college, but she ends up meeting Garrett, who is also in this class with her. He's like failing the class, but he is a star hockey player at the college and needs to have his grade up to continue playing hockey there. They make a deal basically where she ends up tutoring him and she gets to make the football player jealous by hanging out with Garrett who's like the star hockey player. It gets really interesting and you can probably kind of predict what happens but Hannah and Garrett start hitting it off and things kind of take a turn but I really love this series. It kind of like brought me back to college which is fun and I just loved Hannah. I loved Garrett and I've heard the other books in this series are really great as well so if you are looking for like a sportsy romance a little more like spicy for sure this would be a great book i rated this a four again so definitely a great read and i would recommend that you guys read it the third book i read in april was a court of thorns and roses if you didn't see my reading viral books for a week this was a part of that and so was this last one i had been putting akatar off for so long because again like i'm always scared to read hyped up books in fear that i won't like them as much as everyone else does but i have had this for like quite a long time so i was like i just need to knock it out become a fantasy girly and get in my fantasy era so that's exactly what i did i loved this book so so much i had never read a fantasy book before i read this one and it was so amazing i loved the world of prithian that they were in i loved the characters and i just loved the whole story leading up to it i'm looking forward to reading the other books in this series because i heard it gets better along the way but i honestly gave this book a five out of five stars i think it's it's because it was a whole nother world to me a whole new experience and i just really fell into it fell into the world of it and it kind of like took me over in the best way possible definitely recommend reading this if you have never read fantasy before especially i think 
this is a good one to start with it's really good at explaining the whole world i didn't think it was confusing or anything like that so i would completely recommend this if you are looking to start your fantasy era the fourth book i read in april was twisted love the first book in the twisted series guys don't hate me for this but i just did not like this book i thought it was such a toxic book between the two characters so you have ava who's like the main character she's the younger sister of josh josh basically ends up going abroad so he asks his best friend alex to kind of watch over ava she's in college so alex moves into josh's house while he's gone to kind of keep an eye on her but he is like extremely wealthy has his own company runs his own business that kind of thing they start to gain feelings for each other and kind of have a relationship but alex is just very controlling it seems and just kind of manipulating manipulative i just didn't love his character in general it just wasn't the book for me i don't know if i'll continue on just because i just really did not like this book i think i rated it a three out of five on goodreads i liked parts of it but again just alec i did not like him as a character so that really deterred me from this book so that was number four of april the fifth book in april was the lawless this is book one in the chestnut springs series i was obsessed with this book i again read this in my viral reads for a week so if you want like end up details details about it go check that video out but I fell in love with the setting of this especially it's very much a cowboy book which I am not into in real life but I feel like it was so different from other books I've read and I just loved the setting this story is about Summer and Rhett Rhett is a professional bull rider and Summer is the daughter of the company that basically represents Rhett and right off the bat he gets into trouble with like a publicity thing and she kind of has to come in and be his babysitter she kind of looks after him until the world championship happens and they start to form a bond they definitely get to know each other real closely because they're kind of living together the rule is like he can't touch her or start dating her basically because it's his like boss's daughter technically but that obviously goes south and they start to form a relationship but i just really loved their connection i loved Rhett as a character and i loved summer this book was again a four out of five for me but i'm for sure going to read the other two books in this series because I loved this so much and the cover is absolutely stunning so it's just great to have on your bookshelf as well but this was number five of April the sixth book in April I read was book lovers by Emily Henry I just posted a reading Emily Henry for a week video so if you guys want to check that out I think it's a fun video but it basically said that I'm not a huge fan of Emily Henry even though I had only read one book by her I just like did not like that book very much it was a beach read that I had already read so I figured I would try some other books of hers because her new release happy place came out like last week and i wanted to read that so this was kind of a lead up to that but i started with book lovers i loved parts of book lovers but it definitely was not one of my favorite books i loved the relationship between nora and her sister i thought that was like the best part of the book overall i didn't love charlie who's like the love interest for nora in this book he was just like okay to me there wasn't really anything special or anything that stood out about him to me personally i liked the sister relationship in this more than the actual romance part of it so i I'm giving this a three out of five because love the sister relationship didn't like the actual romance very much but this was number six in april number seven in april was people we meet on vacation and this is where things took a turn for me with emily henry my goal was obviously to see if i were to like her books by the end of the week and i really really liked people we meet on vacation i know this isn't everyone's favorite emily henry book but i really enjoyed this one this is a book about poppy and alex they met in college through a ride share and had been friends ever since basically they took vacations every single summer it was like something they always looked forward to they always went to a new location until they kind of stopped talking and i think it had been like around two years before poppy reached out to alex kind of accidentally through a text and they kind of met up again they decided to try to work things out with their friendship which they ended up doing and then they end up forming a relationship which i really liked i thought it was a slow build up but like a really good build up with a lot of details leading to like how they felt about each other which I really enjoyed I know some people didn't like that I gave it a four out of five and I definitely recommend it number eight in April was happy place again by Emily Henry this was the last Emily Henry book I read of the week and it was her new release that just came out last week so I know a lot of people kind of hopped on this this book is basically about a group of friends they kind of met in college they gained like a group of six of them eventually through like significant others in that every summer they meet up at one of their friends lake cottage 
house kind of thing it's actually like a grand house like she's pretty rich <laughs> but they meet up at her house every summer again they like look forward to this vacation every year the two main characters are harriet and win and they are fiancés but before this summer happens they end up breaking off their engagement and they don't tell their friends because they don't want to ruin the trip basically for everyone so harriet shows up win is not supposed to be there and they kind of surprise her by bringing win on the trip so then chaos incurs they decide to basically cover up that they've broken up so their friends have like a good trip and everything and so the whole week is about them going back through their feelings they go back in time from when they first met and how their relationship formed which i really really loved the one thing i will say about this book is i just don't think i liked win as much as other people i thought he was a good person and i did like some parts of his character but he also like blamed harriet a lot for his problems it seemed like or would kind of like put things on her he thought that he was not smart and not hardworking, and he would always like tell harriet that she's like way smarter than him and i just thought it was kind of weird that he kind of like put that on his fiance but basically it's like a second chance romance kind of trope and they kind of rekindle their relationship while they're on this trip there's a lot of like friend problems they go through throughout it with their friend group that i really enjoyed reading about so i would recommend this book i gave it a four out of five in the end so I did end up liking Emily Henry books throughout the week, which I was happy about. <laughs> the very last book I read in April was The Half of It by Madison Beer. This is her memoir that was released just last week again. I'm not like a huge Madison Beer fan, so I don't really know what drew me to pick this book up, but I decided to do it anyways. This book is super short. I think 150 pages, I read it in like one day. I don't really want to rate this book because it's someone's story and she shares like deep things about her life, which I don't feel like I have the right to like judge someone on because it's an actual real person. But I will say that this wasn't like my favorite memoir. One of my favorite books is Jeanette McCurdy's memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And that book was like so captivating. The writing was incredible. And I just like didn't really feel the same way about this book, unfortunately. She talks about a lot of real life problems, which I liked that she opened up about and talked about problems that celebrities have that are very relatable to real life humans, you know? So I liked that part, but again, like wasn't my absolute favorite book. But this was my ninth book and final book I read in April. Those were all of the nine books I read this month in April. We had some good ones in there. Hopefully this next month I can read a five-star book because I'm itching to get one. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and what your thoughts are. But I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.